All right, my name is Alan Ben Bassett. I'm a uh, freelance CVCRM uh, consultant, and I'm going to give a talk about the CVCRM API. This will be a very gentle introduction to the API. So, if you're not an experienced developer, I hope um, you can follow. There was a two day dev course before this conference. And Xavier also gave a two-hour slot session about developing for a CVCRM. So it's a very large topic. So don't ex expect to know everything after 50 minutes. All right. To um, put everything in place, let's think about the ways you can interact with your data in CVCRM. One of the methods you all know is using the, uh, using the user interface by clicking around. You have the menus and you have the screens and you can manipulate your data. So that's you know, the obvious way to interact with your CVCRM data. There's another method for um, getting data into your system instead of just typing. You can import data. And in CVCRM, there are lots of uh, things you can import. You can import contacts, activities, contributions, participants, memberships, etc. You just uh, select a CSV file, you upload it, and you can import things instead of just typing. On the same level, you can export data when you do uh, a search. Then your search results, you can select and you can click on the action export and that's a way of getting uh, data out of your system. There's a let's say more a brutal way <laughs> of interacting with your data and you just hack the database. You can use uh, any MySQL tool to uh, do select statements, uh, insert, delete, whatever. Uh, one of these tools is PHP MyAdmin, but there are other MySQL, MySQL uh, tools to interact with your data. And then last but not least, a way to interact with your data is using the CVCRM API, the Application Programmer's Interface. And that's what uh, we are going to talk about this session. Let's start with just a demo about uh, the API. So, um, This is the, the simplest example I can imagine to um, test the API of CVCRM. Of course, you can use the API Explorer. I'll show it in a moment. But if you just want to type some code, here is an example in PHP. You see these three lines is all you need to um, make a connection with CVCRM. So the example you see here is how you can, uh, maybe I should just run it to, uh, to show it. It's, um, where's my file? Can make it larger. So I just uh, call PHP and then my script file and when I run it I extract data from CVCRM and this is just a list of people who don't want to get an email. So it's without creating extensions and using civics and whatever just to illustrate how you can call the API and get data in or out of the system and not 
just hack the SQL database. So you need these three lines of code to bootstrap CVCRM, as they call it. So it's just a reference to sites, all modules, you know, this is a Drupal installation. And uh, get this uh, config file. Then you have to include another file, create a singleton, and then up you go. You can, from your PHP code, you can talk with CVCRM. And the line we are mostly interested in this session is here. It's all about calling the PHP function CVCRM underscore API3, which is the built-in function to do API stuff. And this function has three parameters. The first one is the entity. The second one is an action. What do you want to do with this entity? It could be extracting data, get, but it could also be create a new entity or update an existing entity. And then the third argument are parameters. And in PHP, the uh, API function expects the parameter to be an array. And it's what we called an associative array, which means we have a name instead of just an index and a value. And this name, do not email, corresponds with and then just launch my um, CVCRM. If I just do a search, you probably all know this, but uh, where is it? With uh, the communication preferences of a contact, you have here a flag, do not email. That's a field I'm referencing here. So when it's marked, which means the value is one, that will be my filter of my API, API call. I will get all the contacts with this flag. Can I just ask what the option dot is? Yes, I'll just show it. I'll uh, just leave it out. And when I run my script again, I have 25 records. When I put option, option limit to minus one, I have 43 records. By design, when you get data from CVCRM using the API, it will return only 25 records. That's a built-in arbitrary number. Uh, why did they do this? If you have an, uh, an installation with 300,000 contacts and you just do contact get, you would get a lot of data back. So they put in these limitations so that you deliberately have to uh, to limit yourself or not. And that's it. So you call the function, you get the result back, and then what I did in this example is just loop over the result and uh, show the display name of every contact. If I go back to my presentation, Let's examine this anatomy of an API call. We have this associative array with parameters and options, like the option limit. We have a specific format of the API, which means first you specify your entity, and then you specify what you want to do with this entity, like a get, get single, create, delete. And then 
this function call will return again an associative array with the results and so it's an array that contains certain specific things like um, the values which is in itself an array that contains your result but there is also a count like you can like you can see at the bottom of the screen there is also an is underscore error which will be set to one if there is an error during your call uh, and an error uh, message too this was a demo for extracting data we can also update a record I'll show you the code mm. even less lines of code again we have the three lines to include to make a connection with CVCRM then we recognize our CVCRM underscore API 3 function with the entity here well, the exercise is to update the job title of a person let's look up J Backman All right, you see this person has no job title. Let's update the job title using the API. So we have our parameter array, which says of contact with ID 141, which is this one. Make the job title, job title equals to marketing manager, just as an example. And then instead of contact get, we use contact create which might be a little, a little bit confusing we're not gonna create a new record we're just gonna update uh, the record but if you want to update a record using the API you just use the create action but you have to specify the ID and then the API will know it should update the contact with this ID It will create a new one, but it will say that uh, there are some missing required uh, parameters. Because here I just specified job title. I should at least give a name, first name, last name, I guess. Yeah, or email, yeah. So let's run this one. Uh, Sorry, just before you go up that screen, mm -hmm. um, I had, I'd been reading the array as ID equals or bigger than oh no it's just let's say an an Something arrow yeah that's, that's right that. yeah this is this is PHP syntax okay. yeah um, you could write this like this too params ID equals and then params job title equals marketing manager that would be the same it's just a matter of syntax so I'm gonna run change job title and here I have my message job title changed which is this one then I can refresh the screen and you see the job title is uh, filled in questions so far about getting data or updating data can the users need to um, query multiple objects at the same time in the API like multiple entities yes you can by, by creating joins in something new uh, in 4.7 uh, yes that makes sense it's much more efficient
there's this concept of chaining and joining. You can find it uh, on the website. So again, same thing, we have an array with parameters, we have our function with an entity, action, and a result. Why use the CV Serum API? Just simply because it's the preferred way of, um, of inter interacting with the system. It's also shipped with the product, so you have a guarantee of uh, compatibility. If it's just a standard way of calling uh, the function or getting data out of the system, and so it will work in uh, future releases, while if you just hack the database, you don't have this guarantee. Does the CV Serum API speak my language? <laughs> I just uh, demonstrated PHP, and what I did is um, using standalone PHP script to interact with the CV Serum because it's just a few lines of code. But usually you will um, use an extension if you want to uh, you know, interact with the system. For instance, run uh, a nightly job that updates your uh, membership status or whatever. That will be an API call uh, that you will write yourself and that will be stored in an extension. But you can also use the API in JavaScript, usually in combination with a jQuery or another library. There's also a REST interface that's nice if you have a website on a separate server and you want to get data of a CV CRM uh, installation, then you can use the REST interface. The screens in the current versions of um, CVCRM are written in Smarty, except the mail, uh, which is uh, Angular, but most of them are Smarty templates. In Smarty, you can also uh, use the API. It's a bit against MVC principle, because that's, that's a presentation layer, and usually you don't query stuff in a presentation layer, but in some use cases, it's very handy to, uh, to be able to do that. And then uh, Drush can also execute um, some uh, API calls. And then there's a new tool I learned about uh, this conference yesterday. It's a CV uh, tool uh, Tim Orton used. So that's uh, another way of uh, making API calls. So let's do a JavaScript demo. Let's say you want um, on your uh, contact form display the number of donations people have made. So without having to look at contributions and then filter on the type of uh, contribution type donations that you want to immediately see two donations or one donation. That's something you can do with the uh, CV Serum API using JavaScript. I'll demonstrate how it looks like by looking up contributions of um, financial type donations. I'll do a search. So I see this person, Backman Lee, Princess, made two donations. So if I open the contact form, you see I have this custom message. I created, I'll show the code in a minute, this contact made two donations. Just an example I made up. If I take another person, like Cooper Bob, he just made, or he made one donation. How does it look like? For this, I created an extension. stored in sites default files cvcrm xt there i created that module that extension i'll just show the javascript code so 
so I used jQuery to uh, to be able to do this but what you should focus on in the first place is this CRM.API3 that's the way to call the API using JavaScript and you recognize the three things we saw in the earlier examples it has three function arguments we have the entity in this case contribution we have the action in this case get count and we have the array of parameters in JavaScript you can write it like this curly braces and then you see here contact underscore ID is a certain ID and financial type is one these are donations and then when I have a result the done method is called it's this function that will be executed I make sure I have a result and then using jQuery I just put some HTML snippet on the page with a certain color and then you know this contact made data.result donations Just an example of using the CVM, CVCRM API with JavaScript within an extension. So you want to see the whole code here. I, when the document is fully loaded, this function is called and this function will get the contact ID from the screen and then if we have a contact ID we do the API call questions about using the API in JavaScript I don't know if you saw the presentation yesterday uh, it was a lightning talk about integration with Google Docs and that person uh, from the Google script language uh, called the API and it was also this function so you can use it from different environments let's show the um, API in another context is with rest calls and REST calls means you have another website or application that will call over HTTP your CVCRM installation and CVCRM will return what you ask. A use case could be you have a um, special website for an event you organize let's say some kind of fundraising uh, event and uh, that has nothing to do with your CVCRM installation but you would like to uh, to show the participants uh, for that event and this information is, is stored in your in CVCRM on a completely different web server so from this website you could ask give me all the participants for that event that would be a use case for a rest call I can show you the code for this so this website this for this for my event is uh, written in PHP so I have um, an example of using REST within PHP but you can uh, also use REST in, in a .NET website or whatever so what's happening here is that you call the API from a URL so this is a quite long URL I split it up on several lines so you can see what's happening you have the um, URL of your CVCRM website and there you call 
a special page which is rest.php and it's located if you have Drupal website on sites all modules oops sites all modules cvcrm extern slash rest.php and after that URL you give an, a lot of arguments let's focus on these two in the first place the things we saw earlier we have an entity in this case participant and an action in this case get because we want to get all the participants of that specific event and the parameters are with this argument json equals and then between curly braces you specify your parameters here I specify the ID of the event and I specify what I want to return I just need the display name on this website I don't want to show email addresses or IDs or whatever so I can specify that I want to see the display name and then I use a PHP module called curl to execute this so it will uh, go to uh, this website extract the result which is formatted as JSON which is some kind of notation so I get the result back I decode it, it and then I get uh, an object with certain fields and one of them is values and I can iterate over the values array and show the display name in an unordered list now there is a built-in security can I explain that to us? <laughs> yeah because otherwise you can if you know a certain organization use a CVCRM you just uh, type in the URL uh, rest.php and you can extract all the data so there's a built-in security um, first of all you have to know the key of that installation and which is a, a unique number or a randomly generated number every time you install CVCRM that number is generated, it's stored in a config file. So in order to be able to do a REST call, you have to look in the configuration file of your installation, uh, sites default CVRM, CVCRM settings, and in this file, there is a line with the CVCRM site key and it's this code that you need to include in your REST call that's the first uh, thing you have to do about security the next argument of our call um, where is it? should close some files <laughs> where's my fundraising oh, here so that was the side key the next key is an API key And the API key is linked to a user of your, of your CVCRM. I can show you that. So now I use a database tool to fill in the API key, but there's also a uh, extension developed by Civic Desk that you can install and then you have a field API key on your contact page and then you have you know a user interface to enter the API key but you can also do it directly in the database because usually you don't ha you have only one user with the API key if you use uh, rest calls 
but it's in the um, CVCRM contact table. So these are the fields of one record and um, somewhere you should have the field, here it is, API key. So you can put whatever you want in this field, some kind of secret uh, code. And that will mark the user, or in this case it's just a contact, but that will mark this contact that it can access um, REST, through REST. And then you have to give that user the permissions um, to do so. So then I have to, don't remember which user I filled in the API key, it's contact2. So if, if I look up contact2, So here you can see, I guess you know this, this is just a contact in CVCRM, but if you have this field, it's a user, which means he or she has a login. And this user must have a permission to um, access CVCRM, either because he or she is an administrator, either because this person is in a Drupal uh, group that has the permission and it's a permission if I go to permissions uh, I think it's called yeah CVCRM access Ajax API so you, you have to set up certain things in order to be able to uh, access your data through REST. And would you suggest setting up a user that would only use the REST? Maybe, so yes. Just give it that permission, nothing else? Yes. Instead of using it just an existing contact uh, that yeah. could be a member of your organization or staff member, just create a contact or a user and, uh, well, you need to create a two. A contact because it's on contact level that you have to fill in the API key mm. but it could be uh, with the name uh, I don't know rest user or whatever uh, 4.30 so in seven minutes no no problem, no problem. We're going to finish by showing uh, where you can find more information about the CVCRM API and um, it's of course on cvcrm.org where you can find uh, more information about the API. There are also uh, on Stack Exchange or the older forum you find a lot of uh, discussions about the API. Mm -hmm. So I know some of the training documents are on the wiki, I think, as well. Are the training documents on there for the developer training? Like, like if I just had a, a spare half hour, uh, like we all have many of us, mm -hmm. uh, I could, could, is it possible to go and have a run through some of the stuff on there? And have a look? Um, and yeah. I know the admin training is on, I just didn't know if the developer training Yes, there's also a developer training, yeah. But an easy way to um, experiment with the API Explorer, but don't do this on a production server if you really want to update and delete and so because it's real, it's not uh, some fake environment, is on your own website. If you, uh, here is my CVCRM, no, not yet. Here is CVCRM, if I just type API slash explorer. I have a nice uh, user interface where I can select an entity, an action, let's say contact and uh, action is get 
and then I can um, enter some parameters like do not email equals yes in this case and the API Explorer will generate code the rest call smarty we haven't seen in this presentation but we uh, saw PHP examples with CVCRM API 3 function call and JavaScript example CRM.API3 and the results and there you see how it's returned and the different fields you know we saw the values you can iterate through so I hope I gave a gentle introduction to uh, CVCRM API and enough information for you to discover how you can do much more with it. Okay, thank you. Thank you.